Hello folks, this is Kiki. Uh, doing, I believe we did a second final, or the final stage of uh, Iron Man Team Assault. Uh, Fortress of Fire. Uh, this time we require a language and a communications person. And uh, basically, this is one of those fun missions of whoever you pick determines which way you go. Uh, which is kind of a nice thing for a 3DO to do. So, uh, after we kill this guy here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and explain to you what happened about last mission. Uh, I replayed it, and what I found out was that the uh, gray tank there is actually a new trap. Uh, I think that was an intended trap, so that uh, you have to actually fight everything. But it was, but it was a nice touch to have the mortarman back briefly, if not fully. Anyway, basically this mission uh, branches off, and uh, depending on who you bring, it determines which way you go. Also, uh, get good at killing jeeps <laughs> with your machine gun. It, it helps a lot uh, in later stages and stuff. Say it makes it very re because it was, yeah, sorry tongue twister. Anyway, it makes it where the uh, bazooka is more used versus tanks uh, because honestly, the auto aim for bazooka really fails. Uh, uh, again, bad testing, whatever. But anyway, uh, this mission, I apologize, but there will be some backtracking. But uh, first things first is we're going to go to the barracks, which is this side here, if you saw the sign earlier. And there's another uh, issue, is they show you, they show the enemy on the map, and then they don't uh, target for whatever reason. But at least if you knock off the guy, you can... If you switch guys, it'll auto aim for you. So I've used a little bit of hassle. Anyway, you see that one of the guys dropped the Atan uniform. Also, there's one other thing I want to mention about this part here. Uh, it brings two gameplay mechanics. The first one is those flames that you saw up ahead there. And the second one is uh, kind of more focused for the communications guy. You notice we haven't used communications guy too much. This time we actually get to use one. Uh, and if you played the or watched my LP a while back, you'll notice that that billboard, or I mean that blackboard, was up at a previous video. Uh, they posted that there in case you forgot uh, what the order is to uh, launch the rockets. So basically, I think it is that if you don't press the uh, triggers in that order, you lo you automatically lose. So uh, keep that order in mind. And I'm quite sure that there'll be LPers who play the game and go, "How the heck are you supposed to know and stuff?" It's like, well, uh, that sign there tells you. And here's the second one. Uh, this game warns you uh, once if you have a linguist. And then twice if you just walk up there. Uh, this is the second branch. This is like a separate branch that you can go to. If you have a guy who's under disguise, uh, what you can do is you see all those little weird plated floors right there. You can have your disguise guy walk uh, outside of those and sneak around. And he can go down the right side to... Uh, take out whatever's there or you can just gun hoe it uh, it's whatever you, you want to do both ways I mean that way is rather painful but it is doable but I fi but like I said you can either charge through it you can uh, just walk casually through casually through it with your disguised guy you can just avoid it altogether each way works for you 
whoever you brought with you. Also, here's the uh, second game. Here's another gameplay element that's rather annoying, but at least it makes sense. Uh, basically, as you run along this corridor here, uh, the tan will auto trigger about uh, there's an intruder or stop the intruder. If you brought a guy with a disguise, uh, they'll trigger it anyway, but they won't trigger as aggro, so you can stab them in the back or whatnot. However, uh, what will happen is if you stab some guy, uh, there will be people behind you, and then they'll start shooting you. And then you got the people who were, you were just stabbing, they'll turn around and they'll start shooting you. So you're just better off triggering these, all of these off and going your way. Less stress, less hassle. Just do it. Unfortunately, there isn't a communication and disguise guy, uh, so that makes that makes this mission rather harder than what it I think they intended, which isn't too bad of a thing. You also notice that there's this weird uh, tan square there. Uh, that's another gameplay element that they wanted to try. That's in this mission. That's kind of new, but. Uh, it's annoying at the same time. I mean, it's helpful, but it's also kind of annoying because you got to backtrack and whatnot. Make sure you guys get the ammo and stuff. Anyway, here's the whole map for you, showing you all the pr different paths and stuff. You can pause it th at that point and go ahead and uh, review it if you want to. Uh, but th Unfortunately, I didn't put a successful run up uh, out of my two videos. Uh, this will be the first of the two, uh, but I'll show off both paths just because I like the concept. And uh, unfortunately, neither run proved fruitful. So uh, I will post up a successful run once I get successfully completed. But I figured I'd show off the uh, actual full level. Also, don't worry about the Jeep uh, shooting Tyke here. Uh, they won't go for any guy who is in the skies as long as they don't shoot. Uh, there is an exception to this rule, and uh, basically what it is is, like, let's say that uh, I brought Squirrel up to a section level where it said, uh, stop the intruder. If I bring Tyke up, uh, the enemies will already aggro and will actually start shooting Tyke. Uh, meaning you can't do that. So you have to either do it before you trigger it, or you have to uh, do it after you trigger it. So So basically, it's up to you how you want to do it. But like I said, uh, if you do it before, the enemies will trigger anyway. It just means that you you can get your guy who's in the skies uh, in position, and but you still gotta have a squirrel shoot through everything, or whoever you have as your other other guy. Man, these boxes here are ammo. And like I said, I I realize this is kind of tedious and boring, but. Uh, it's kind of one of those necessary evils that really bog down the gameplay. I mean, it's a nice feature to be able to crawl inside the stuff that 3 do really could have used more often. I know they tried experimenting more with it on the Sarge's Heroes line of games, but uh, still didn't quite fully get it. Also, your uh, partner will shoot the lava for whatever reason. If you have him as an idol inside of it, he'll just randomly shoot it. I have no idea why. Supposedly there's this bug where if you pick up three semi-autos on a level, you get infinite ammo for it, but who cares? <laughs> you don't really see much purpose. And yeah, you, in this level can get annoying with the noise. Uh, luckily, you don't have to hear it. But for me, I, I, I keep hearing this. 
noise every five seconds or so, and it gets rather annoying. So, and then of course you have the machine gun jeep and whatever that aggro on so, And as you can see here, Squirrel is shooting the uh, ladder here for whatever reason. But like I said, they don't really play around too much with that whole ducking through entrances thing, uh, other than Sarge's Heroes line. So it was a nice attempt at a new gameplay element. It's just too late in the series, and they gave up on the project or something. Okay, well, since I'm kind of running out of things to talk about, because honestly, like, the whole rest of this level is all uh, stop the intruder auto triggers uh, the rest of the way. Uh, is basically uh, for future projects, um, I'm going to finish up the two NES LPs, uh, the comparisons. Uh, and then after that, I'm going to do a uh, dual. Uh, comparison uh, with uh, Mag Shea or DY8, whatever name, whatever his long name is. I'm I'm sorry, I can't say that really really long awkward spelling name, but his original account was Mag Shea, so that's usually what I refer him to. Uh, but we're going, but well, he's going to be playing uh, Final Fantasy. Origins, which is uh, Final Fantasy 1 and 2, but he's doing the first one first. Uh, so I figured that I would do a comparison between the uh, old NES version and the uh, PS1 version. And you guys can kind of see how the Final Fantasy games kind of change and stuff. And I mean, I realize that there's also the Game Boy version. Uh, but I'm not touching that with a fine, with like a 90 foot pole. Just, uh, I'm sorry, but I, I think that spell names should be, make sense. They shouldn't have like Aga or Uga or Booga Uga or, you know, what, <laughs> some of those Final Fantasy spell names nowadays that they come up with, like Thrunda Gaga. <laughs> so it just, make, it just totally confuses the heck out of me. Um, so, <laughs> uh, if you guys, you guys can get kicked out of me watching that, but like I said, that's going to be later on down the road. Uh, also said Volcanic Ridge to the right, uh, if we caught that. But, anyway, that's as far as I'm going for future plans. Uh, if anybody still wants to do any uh, dual commentaries or uh, co-op commentaries or just tag teams or any of that sort of stuff, let me know. Uh, I have uh, Hamachi. I've got Mumble as far as voice goes. Uh, Oh, this is kind of one of those weird ones. This is where the game gets tricky. If you played a uh, Final Front, it, it kind of sets you up for that one. Final Front tutorials. But I kind of like the trap on that one. Anyway, let's pick up this med kit, and I'll show you how to do this one. If I get time, I think it'll, yeah, it'll be on the next video that I show you how to do this, I think. But it's kind of it's kind of tricky, but it's kind of cool at the same time. I like this gameplay. This gameplay trap kind of forces you to use your sniper to clear out everything. Be careful. And then even then, there's a little bit of a luck factor to it. But anyway, we'll address that on the next video. So uh, Kiki signing out. Uh, thank you. And uh, later, also, see, invisible wall. But anyway, later.